Hey everybody, we are teaching Tilt Brush, and this time we're going to talk about what just happened at the end of January 2021. Google has made Tilt Brush open source. Hooray! Oh no! What the actually does that mean for us Tilt Brush users? Well, let's talk about that. So Tilt Brush is made by Google, and Google has decided to release its code out into the wild. The term open source just means anybody can see the code that makes Tilt Brush. The good thing means anybody can do their own version. The bad thing does mean anybody can do their own version, but also it means the version you're using now, Tilt Brush 23.3, is the last version Google themselves will be working on. This does not mean it's going to stop working. It's not going to go away. Anybody who got Tilt Brush through the Oculus Store or the PlayStation Store or through Steam, it's still going to be there. It's still going to work. It's still this version. Anybody new can still buy it through those sources and use it as it is. The only thing it means is there won't be any new versions. There won't be any updates. 23.3 is pretty much the last version of Google Tilt Brush, for better or for worse. So those of you who are just using Tilt Brush for yourselves to create art, to exchange with friends, Polly will go away in June 2021, but Tilt Brush itself ain't going anywhere. It will still be here. It will still be usable. And if that's all you care about, you're good. That's really all you need to know. Tilt Brush itself, even though it's going open source, the commercial version, the one you buy through the stores as an app, will still be there, will still work, will still allow you to exchange your tilts with people through Sketchfab, through Google Drive, through emailing tilt files. That will still work. All of these lessons we're doing in teaching Tilt Brush are still valid, uh, except for the Polly one, because Polly's going away. So if that's all you're here for, have fun, everybody. Enjoy your Tilt Brush. I'm now going to go into more detail about what open source means and how we as Tilt Brush people can take advantage of it and what exactly is coming up down the road. Because this may be Google's last version of Tilt Brush, but now as open source, anybody can make their own. Here's how that works. The main tilt brush itself is called the main fork, the main branch, and that's the one made by Google. That's the one that's not going to change. But from here on out, anybody else can make their own. So for example, there's a wonderful group called Icosa. Icosa is making their own fork of Tilt Brush. So it's going to do their stuff in addition to what Tilt Brush does. Live, the group that makes my virtual reality, mixed reality camera thing, they do their own fork, which makes Tilt Brush much more simple, much more compatible with their live system. I might make a fork where the only difference is whenever you use a brush, a voice is screaming, shameless mayhem, the entire time. So a fork might not necessarily add good usability. It might just be somebody making their own version of Tilt Brush. So only Google can call it Tilt Brush, but anybody making their own fork can call it whatever they like. The shameless brush or whatever you want to call it. Live called theirs Live for Tilt Brush. Basically, each one is an entire program in and of itself. You don't need any of the other versions. You don't even need Google Tilt Brush to download and use any one of these forks. So the advantage is anybody can make a version that does what they want. There'll be a multiplayer fork so you can sketch with friends. Another fork where people are making custom brushes, new types of brushes to play with. Maybe another fork that does something completely different and silly like I was talking about. So you can see in a short amount of time, there's going to be a lot of these branches and forks, and we're basically getting Tilt Brush chaos. Glorious, wonderful chaos. Ideally, as time goes on, some of these forks won't last, some of these forks might not be usable, or ideally, somebody like Icosa will make a fork that it's easy to add their own individual mods to. 
So I only need the Icosa branch and I can load in multiplayer and custom brush branches off that fork, depending on how people work, whether it's together or independently, it really depends on what we're working here. Because the biggest disadvantages of these forks is they are completely different programs. So there'll be a different fork and then a different fork and then a different fork. So anything I do in this one has nothing to do with the others. So if I load a custom brush in here, when I go multiplayer, those custom brushes are not available. If I make a sketch with a multi uh, custom brush and then I try to use it in multiplayer, the whole sketch might break because this fork doesn't know about their brushes. That's why a mod system would be preferred so we have less chance of these types of incompatibilities. So if you are planning on working with these open source custom versions of Tilt Brush, please bear in mind, especially in the early days, compatibility between forks is not guaranteed in any way. Hopefully some of these branches will start being intercompatible, adding each other, that type of thing, but we'll just have to see how it goes. Right now in January 2021, we're just hitting the tip of the iceberg, as it were, and we'll have to wait for the next couple of months or the next year to see how these forks play out and which ones actually survive to be the best, most useful versions of Tilt Brush. Ideally, it'll narrow down so that most people are using the same versions, but we'll have to wait and see. If you are a programmer yourself, feel free to get your own branch. These are downloaded free off the internet. The main website to get them from is a place called GitHub. So I'm gonna see if I can open up my uh, local pictures here. I've actually got a screen capture of a GitHub web page so you can see what you're getting into. It's going to list the Tilt Brush program files and have one big button to download the code. Once you've got those pieces, if it's raw code, you'll need a system like Unity to compile it into an .exe file. If you're just trying to download somebody else's fork, most of those people are indeed going to do that for you. So here is the live version for my multi-virtual mixed reality camera here. And it's got all of the open, open source files, but it also has right here the executable. Live for Tilt Brush EXE. I'm on a Windows system, so that's what I'm going to run instead of the normal Tilt Brush. This then gets put into the headset, connected with live, yada, yada. But that's how we're getting these systems as a fork, as its own separate version of Tilt Brush. That's all we need you guys for. Thank you very much. So moving forward, we're going to get different versions put out by different people, but anybody, programmer of your own, can grab these code files and make your own entire version of the program itself. So normal users, nothing to worry about. Tilt brush is still tilt brush. Programmers, advanced users who want these extra abilities, we now have the ability to make new versions that incorporate new brushes, multiplayer, sound effects, anything people want to try to come up with. Hopefully this puts your mind at rest and you're not worried in a panic about what's going to happen to your tilt brush. Everything will be okay. So thanks for joining us. I hope this helps answer some questions and put your mind at rest. Feel free to join us each week or check us out on YouTube slash Shameless Mayhem. And we do this all the time. Let us know if you got questions. Feel free to show off your artwork. Subscribe if you can. Otherwise, just have fun with Tilt Brush. Take care, everybody.